Are you still sure you're ready to defend your point of view, even if the whole world thinks otherwise? Let's check it out. We asked young people to evaluate photos of a girl. How attractive is she in their opinion? At the same time, the only real participant in the experiment is Anatoly, the photographer. The task of the others, Philip, Kirill, and Ivor, is to contradict Anatoly's opinion, to make him doubt his decision, even if their opinion, in fact, coincides with his. She is really beautiful, and she knows how to present herself. I really like the color of her hair. She creates a good mood for the photo shoot. I don't really like the nose line. I mean, it's straight. Quite ordinary. Exactly, yeah, straight and rather rude. I can't really call her beautiful. I, I mean, she's nothing special. She comes and goes, you'd never remember her. She would make a good housewife and mother. She could cook and bring up children. She shouldn't be a model walking on a catwalk or being photographed for glossy magazines. Here's the classic scenario of this experiment, which has been already carried out with hundreds of volunteers and with the use of MRI scanners. If the group believes that the woman is not so beautiful, the participant changes his or her opinion within an hour and agrees with everyone, and vice versa. And repeating the experiment a month later, scientists found that such an imposed opinion almost never changed. What about Anatoly? Having heard the unflattering comments of his friends, he begins to doubt his opinion. She's definitely a beautiful girl. Well, there's something missing. After the discussion, we asked young people to assess the attractiveness of the girl on a five-point scale. Four, probably. Honestly, I don't like women with blonde hair. I prefer dark brown hair. But at the very beginning of the discussion, Anatoly said that the woman is beautiful, that he likes the color of her hair. Remember how often you have heard your close friends say that someone is not smart enough, unkind, selfish, has the wrong background, and how it has influenced your decision. So next time you are misled by your friends or colleagues, don't blame yourself. You just had no choice. I would give her a three, honestly, yeah. The eyes, I like her eyes, but the rest isn't really exceptional, I would say. One. One? I mean, there's nothing catchy about her. As for the look, it's wilted. She's not bright. She's not spectacular. If we get rid of all these trifles, she will be quite a plain human being. She won't be anything unique. You won't even remember her later. I guess a three, two, not higher. So the group, unlike Anatoly, deliberately considered the girl not very attractive. The young man, as a result, gave her only a four. But at the last moment, he surprised everyone. To me, she's like a summer day, warm, bright. Despite hesitations and deviations from the opinion in formal estimates, Anatoly remained true to his emotional evaluations. So psychologists say that in any team there is 10 to 20 percent of nonconformists who defend their opinion against the majority. Surely this is also an evolutionary useful device for the community. So what do we have in the end? Our decisions are determined by everything, but not by ourselves.